ESPN Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. This morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It's Friday, the 8th of September, which means it is Sports Friday with Eric Sawyer the third Producer, is that Mr. Sawyer on the phone line? Good morning, Mr. Sawyer. How are you? I'm well. What's going on, man? Good well, morning, Bahamas. I am. Uh, I'm very excited, Mr. Soy. I have mm-hmm. members. Yes, sir. The NFL is back. Yeah, I mean that's one thing to be excited about. But I'm excited because this is a football football day. I got football, American football, football and then yeah, I got F U T and F O T. Yeah, I got American football and European football. But let's be careful there, Mr. Sawyer, because F U T B O L is another type of football entirely. Yeah. Where these boys listen. It's only right for a Bahamian to critique football, F-U-T-B-O-L. First of all, these by them is play inside, like they need AC to play. Next thing, they play on a soft, not soft, it's hard, but it's smooth. It, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It have a low coefficient of friction, so it's easy to move across the court. And then the next thing, the ball is very, very tiny, Mr. Sawyer. Like they want to make it easy to play soccer when in the Bahamas, it got to be hard. You got to... You got to be on that field. It may be. I remember when I was playing soccer, the field wasn't even. We didn't have any astro turf. We didn't have any knee pads. At one point, I asked mm-hmm, my coach, good old I could, if I could ha- wear a helmet as goalkeeper. Yeah, but so that's three different types of football. So, Mr. Sawyer, I got to get the show going again. I've got representatives from the Bahamas Football Association in to talk. Good morning about- to you guys. Um, one second. Let me turn the. Say it again, Mr. Sawyer. Good morning to you guys. How are you? Uh, good morning, good morning. Doing very well, thank you. Good, good. But, but we know the NFL season opened last night. Oh, man. Thank you, God, for the good things in life. There's no more beach days. You can't get me to go to the... Well, sorry, all fellas, all fellas. I think I speak for all fellas. No more beach day on Sunday. We ain't going for no more drives. We ain't doing no more. We ain't going for uh, ice cream after uh, Sunday dinner. Uh, movies that make you feel good, and I just feel like I wasted my money. Uh, we ain't have no conversations about nothing. You know, things that could wait. That could wait till Monday. Monday before Monday night football. Listen, Life is great. I imagine you know? this. Yeah, man, you have to understand. When, when, you see, when you see the NFL is on TV, listen, bring the potatoes, I'll peel it. There you go. Bring the cheese, I'll grate it. This is you know, bring the chicken, I will season it. <laughs> but I ain't leaving from in front of the television. Just bring me what you need for me to do. Dear ladies, Man. right now is the time. If you into interior design and you want to see your husband, make sure the TV ever you wanna be, because that's where he could be in front right. of that TV. It's like this is the time to swing him right now, have him sign anything. Give a bank card, anything to get you from talking to him while the game is on. He will this do is it. it right now, ladies. Right now. This is your time. Man, it's an exciting time. We got yes, Harky sir. and Lee decided that she, um, he going to turn around and go in a different direction. Thank you, God. Football you, season God. open up. We had the yes. first cold front of the season last night. The air cooled right down. And Boys then on Saturday, Saturday, we got the Bahamas National Soccer, a.k.a. football team, playing Puerto Rico. But before we get there, Mr. Sawyer, let's talk about the first game to kick off the NFL season, Chiefs versus Lions. When I checked the score in the third quarter last night, it was 14-14. And I can be honest with you, that was too much stress for me. I can't stand it when it's tied like that so late in the game. So I did not follow up on the score. Can you tell me who won the first game 
of the year. Technically, the Lions won. 21 to win. Uh, actually, yeah. the Chiefs lost the game, though. Chiefs didn't have Chris Jones, their star defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. And they also didn't have uh, Travis Kelsey, their star tight end. Yeah. Both were out. Well, well, Chris Jones is out for a contract dispute. He said he's willing to sit out at least eight games without even without even caring for the fact that he's going to be fined. Wow. He'll come back after the eighth game if, if, if a contract is not worked out. And uh, Travis Kelsey uh, hurt his knee in practice just Tuesday going, so that's why he didn't. Right, they just rest in the knee. Yeah, 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 man, just just a precautionary tactic. But but without the safety net of Travis Kelsey, where the Chiefs were definitely exposed. Travis Kelsey on a couple of those plays. I mean, Marquez, Valdez, Skanklin, he he had a very big catch in the first touchdown drive, very big 20-something yard catch uh, in traffic and whatnot. But um, there's nothing like a Travis Kelsey third and seven and the line breaking out, and you know when you give Travis the ball four yards, he's going to get you the extra 12 feet, that extra three yards. He's going to push and get that for you. You know, yeah. so um, when Travis comes back, they'll be all right. I, I mean, a line we had to do to win the game. Yeah. But, but the Chiefs, you know, a lot of drop balls, a lot of, a lot of miscommunications, a lot of misreads. Um, it's the first game of the season, a lot of jitters. And um, they'll get better. They'll get better as they're, as the as the season wears on and the team, but Mr. The team Sawyer, starts to gel. This is the Chiefs. This is the KC, Super the Bowl Kansas Champions. City. Yeah, that's fine. Chiefs, they can't come out like this. Man, the Chiefs beat the Patriots in 2015, 15 or 16 to start after the Patriots won the Super Bowl. That was the I think that was the 28 to three Super Bowl they came back from. Yeah, I think that was the Falcons Super Bowl. But it, um, and the Chiefs beat the Patriots at home. Okay. In Tom Brady's house. So, you know, it's doable. The Bills beat the Rams last year at the start of the season. The Rams were the defending champions last year. It's doable because you have, you know, Super Bowl hangover. Okay, I got you. I don't foresee the Super Bowl hangover happening for the Chiefs the way it happened for the Rams. Okay. Well, the Rams hangover was due to injuries last year. Is it too early to call or we got to make a call next next week? I want to call who you think will win the Super Bowl this year. Oh, well, the Niners can win the Super Bowl. No, it's not too early to call. No, the Sardians. Well, some people call them the Dolphins. They, they're going nowhere. Um, and the Cowgirls, again, are going nowhere. Um, you know, feels good to be able to trash talk, like, officially. Again, this is going to be great. Eh? And we play in the Steelers on Sunday. Yeah. You know, um, that's 49ers. Any Niners out there? One o'clock, playing the Steelers. In oh, Pittsburgh. this is a Bahamian game. 49ers yeah. versus Steelers. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's going to be on TV. All right. Well, once it's not conflicting with the Puerto Rico game, I for it. I oh, no, 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 no. Ah, it, it, it won't. It won't. It can't. Right. Puerto Rico is on Saturday. Uh, 49ers, exactly. Steelers on Sunday afternoon. Bingo. There you go. Mrs. Bingo. So you only got to carry your dry cleaning. Maybe go to the barber, catch the soccer game, and then you're home in time to, you know, season up your wings and your, you know, and your, and your hot dogs and burgers and whatnot. And your veggie hot dogs and your vegan burgers. Rasta does watch football too, you know. Boston's watch football for two. Yes, 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 yes. No lies. All right. Listen, Mr. Sawyer, I got to get uh, with the show. I got a, a trivia question today, and we're giving away four tickets to this Saturday's Puerto Rico game. National football team is playing Puerto Rico yeah, in the CONCACAF yeah, yeah, tournament. Yeah, trivia question already? Because I have a great one. I have. Send it to me via text. Okay. Yeah. Send it to me via text. Will do. All right. Do. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, Mr. Sawyer. I know you're very busy. Now, listen, I got some Ganep lemonade for your people. Okay. We need um, to link up today. Message me. Okay. All right. Will do. Yes, Will sir. Do. Have a great day. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Eric Sawyer, the third our NFL expert, and on the clock with Aaron Green. F U T B O L people. Have a great day as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Football, football, <laughs> right. and football is going to be a fabulous weekend. Uh, Excellent. Absolutely. Now, I got to get to my on-the-clock sand dollar trivia giveaway. It's a football question, so all my footballers get ready. Every day for the next month, we'll be giving away sand dollars to digital wallet holders. Every week, players can win $30 in sand dollars. To be eligible, you must have a sand dollar wallet, and you must answer the trivia question correctly. And you must be a first-time winner. When you call in, give the producer your name and number, your wallet information. 
If you get the question correct, I'm going to ask you to hold the line so we can transfer you back to the producer to confirm your information. Again, listeners are restricted to one transfer for the duration of the competition. That means you can only win once. But have no fear. Hopefully, we're going to get some more sponsors on and we could do some more fabulous trivia giveaways. Here are the numbers to call. 3236232, 3254316, 325-4216. Two four two three hundred five seven two zero for people in the Bahamas, but not in New Providence. It's toll free. It's toll free. It's one of the only free things you can get this weekend. Text line powered by BTC four two two GR nine six. That's four two two four seven nine six. Here is the question: Who is the most famous soccer player in Brazil or dead? Who is the most famous? Soccer player in Brazil, living or dead? I want to say in the world, but that's my bias as a soccer fan. Who is the most famous soccer player, living or dead, in Brazil? Again, the numbers to call, 323 325-4316, 325-4259, 242-300-5720 for people in the Bahamas, but not in New Providence, 422-GR96. That's 422-4796. If you send a text, please include your wallet information in the text. Who's the most famous soccer player, living or dead, in Brazil? In Brazil. A good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Joining me in studio are uh, the assistant coach from the Bahamas national men's soccer team and two of our leading soccer players. These gentlemen, I think, will be playing in the, tour, in the game on Saturday. Well, okay then, there we go. <laughs> Since I am the team captain, to my left, sir, please introduce yourself and tell us your position on the team. My name is Michael Massey. You have to speak right into the mic. My name is Michael Massey. Yeah. I'm a midfielder on the team. Okay, I hear that accent. I've been using. T That's why you wasn't talking. Okay, no problem, sir. My name is William Gardner, and I'm a defender. Okay, and to my right. Uh, good morning. I'm Kevin Davies, the assistant uh, coach. And you will see his picture. I mean to do this. I mean to do this to him this morning. We've got two fabulous stories covering the Bahamas Football Association and their road to the imminent Concacaf tournament in the Tribune, Team Bahamas in tip-top shape for Nations League, in the Guardian, the Bahamas ready for Puerto Rico. So tell us what they mean when you say you're ready for Puerto Rico. Well, being ready means guys have been training hard. They've yeah. been really put in the work. I mean, I've seen them from the time we started, uh, however many months ago, to, mm -hmm. to, the, present, to the present time. Mm -hmm. And the guys are you know, in, in tip-top shape, ready. Uh, last night was our final training session. Okay. And uh, we can see that everything is coming together. So that's, that's what it means when we say they're ready. And I think they're ready. There you go. I know uh, you guys are very excited to Definitely. get back on the field and to play. Tell people, uh, let's, let's start with the game. Uh, you're playing, well, we're going to host the CONCACAF Nations League match. Tomorrow, Saturday the 9th at 6 p.m. at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium, our national soccer team will face Puerto Rico. Correct. Okay. Now, what are y'all playing for? Well, the Nations League is a tournament for the CONCACAF region, which is our Caribbean region. Okay. Uh, up into groups, A, B, C. Uh, the top tier teams are in, in A, the middle teams in B. Okay and so on. So at this present point, we're just playing to see if we can advance to Group A. Okay. And then next year will be the Nations League tournament will be the qualifier for the Gold Cup. Okay. All right. So this is about ranking. This is about advancing in the ranking and attempting to make your way to the top tier group of players for the future qualifying tournaments. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So Tuesday, September 12th, you all will be playing Guyana 
in Guyana. Yes. Now look here, this is going to be the roughest game y'all play, because I can tell you why. Our sports reporter, Simba, he's torn between the Bahamas and Guyana. Yeah. They're both his home. <laughs> they both his love. I can tell you, I've been to Guyana, and I love Guyana. So I don't know, I mean, I know who I can pull for. Y'all don't mind if I also pull for Guyana, right? If we don't mind? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Listen, this gentleman just gave me the look, miss. I don't know if you can get in the stadium if you ain't pulling for Team Bahamas. I appreciate that. This is the one time when you can, you know, you can be sort of, I wouldn't say restricted, but you got you to pull for your nation. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely important for the fans to come out and, and support the team. I mean, when you're on the field and you hear the, the, the goatskin drums, the cowbells, people screaming... Uh, people screaming your name. Oh, I mean, yeah. It gives you motivation and, and, you know, if you're a little tired or whatever. Yeah, it really you boosts you. A little, little extra boost of energy to make that that 60-yard sprint that you might have to do. So yeah. It, it's very important for, for fan support. So I want to encourage everybody to come out and, and support the team. Absolutely. Is there a cost? Let's look at the uh, cost to get in. The pricing on the sheet here. For adults, $20? Yes. All right, children under 13, $10. Yes. VIP includes two drinks, finger foods, that's whatever you could pick up with your fingers, <laughs> premium, however much you could pick up with your fingers one time without getting caught, <laughs> premium seating, special entry, and parking. This is excellent, $35. Those are great prices for international tournament um, spectators. Very good price, very good price. You probably won't find these prices anywhere else in the world. Yeah, I mean, these are excellent prices. Then we're looking at general concessions. You could get beers, you could get soft drinks, you could get Gatorade, water, and assorted snacks. So you could you keep yourself fueled because it's going to take a lot of energy. The spectating is a job, Bahamas. Yes, it is. Our it team is. needs us to come out there and perform our job well. I bring in two things with me, Kneppe lemonade and Kong salad. Okay. Right? Any of y'all, you feeling a little weak on the team, just put your hand in the air. I can throw some conch salad for you. <laughs> Only for y'all, though. Puerto Rico is eat conch ceviche. You don't call it conch salad. We cousins. We cousins. We close. Okay, tickets can be purchased online now at BahamasFA.net. That's BahamasFA, F as in finger foods, A, <laughs> dot net. And you click Get Tickets on the page. So you go to that fa.net, and when you see Get Tickets, that's where you click, and it's going to take you to the process to purchase your tickets. Now, in person, if you don't want to purchase online, you can go to the National Sports Authority office located at the Andre Rogers National Baseball Stadium, Monday to Friday, 9 to 4 p.m. So, right, that means you get to get there today before 4 p.m. and get your ticket for this up coming match. Now, when you there, you're buying your ticket for that match, right? Remember, you got to buy a ticket for Saturday, October the 14th, because the Bahamas uh, team will be playing Antigua and Barbuda in the Bahamas, again, at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. And then again, on Saturday, November the 18th, we'll be playing Guyana again, but in the Bahamas this time, right? right. So when you go there today to get your ticket for Puerto Rico match tomorrow... Make sure you get your uh, Antigua and Barbuda ticket, and you get your Guyana ticket for October and November. Now, can I purchase tickets at the gate? I believe that is the case, yes. Yes, you can do. So, yes. Listen, if you don't make it to the office, here, just get there. Buy your ticket. Bring, bring your children. Bring your young men. Soccer coaches, bring the players. Bring your players. School teachers, bring your Bring, bring your, your students. students. Absolutely. See, the thing with sports is this. Sports can be a catalyst, right, for students. It can be a catalyst for academics, right? We, when we sort of miss that. A lot of our students don't necessarily perform at their peak while they're in school here, but they have an athletic performance that can take them abroad on a scholarship. And then when they get into that university setting, a lot of those athletes focus on academics because they realize that they do have the aptitude for it and they develop that aptitude with their sports development along with their high schooling, right? Along with their schooling. And so it's imperative that we bring students out to these activities. It's about expanding their horizons. I mean, 
you thinking that, oh, not every player wants to be, not every student wants to be a soccer player. I'm the students want to be statisticians. Some students want to be graphic designers and can develop an entire career just creating sports logos, sports themes and sports uniforms, designing mascots, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's, there's just a wealth of opportunities at every sporting engagement. Okay, let's get back to the details. Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, afternoon. Are you having any pregame activities? Um, I can't speak to any uh, pregame activities. Uh, usually there, there isn't because the teams will be on the field warming up. Uh, so there may be, I don't know if there's anything going on in the stands or, or outside like a little area or outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not sure if anything uh, of that nature is going to happen tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I got you. Um, we're still working on our tailgating culture. Yeah. Where yeah. we get people out before the game. And with the technology we have available, right? I know we want to encourage everybody to come into... But once we get to the point where we get our stadiums filled, we got, those bi uh, we got the big screens so people could be in the parking lot as well, watching the game and entertaining um, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. We prefer those people to come inside That's what I'm the saying. stadium. Oh, no, no. <laughs> We're pushing you inside until we hit max capacity. Well, you know, I can't wait till that day, right, when we hit max capacity and then we say, hey, we got a sports platform. Because we were overfilled. We got people who are willing to come and watch the game from the parking lot. All right, so, gentlemen, now to the players. Mm -hmm. I've got a defender and I've got a midfielder. Defender, midfielder. Right. What do you do? What's your role on the team? Um, my role, so I'm, I'm mainly a wide defender. Okay. So You're on the wings? Yes, I'm on the wings. Okay. So my main goal is just to stop their wingers of the opposing team from trying to come down the line, get across into our box. That would be very dangerous for us, yeah, yeah. of course. So I'm just trying to keep them in front of me, send them back, and then we can shape up as a team. All right. Yeah, as a midfielder, I mean, it depends. There's different, different types of midfielders. I typically play further forward. So my job is to create, try and be that creative. Create player. plays. Yeah. Make, make space for players. Are you like an assist man? Are you like the Magic Johnson uh, of the pitch? <laughs> Feeding like the ball, so. reading the spaces, figuring out who to pass to and when to pass? I'd like to say so. Like now, that. how often can a midfielder become a striker, right? Like, I know that's not your role, but how often can a mid does a midfielder get an opportunity to push forward and push a ball into the goal? Well, in the position that he plays, yeah. uh, he, he will have that opportunity to, to push forward, um, to, to get opportunities to score. Um, the, the reality is, if we have the ball, yeah. we have 11 people on attack. Yeah. If we don't have the ball, we have 11 people on defense. So, you know, anybody, the way, the, the way we play, uh, even defenders, you know, yeah. they can push forward and they'll have an opportunity to score. Uh, so we're trying to, to get our team to be offensive-minded. Mm -hmm. you know, back when I played, you know, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, <laughs> we we were more defensive because you know mm -hmm. we you know we would that was just the phase that we were in at that time. But now we're becoming more uh, of an offensive-minded uh, team. I'm glad you made that reference because when I was playing field hockey, I used to use a uh, tibia. For my stick, right? A dinosaur, about 100 years after you was playing mm -hmm. soccer. Um, <laughs> and I played defense. Mm -hmm. In fact, I found this odd thing. I, I grew up in the Bahamas. I went to Britain. I went to a boarding school and started playing netball. And I thought, this is my time to shine, right? I'm too short to dunk on a 10-foot rim, but netball is just my size. I want to play offense. Hmm. I started off playing offense, and one time, I block a ball, right? Um, shift the defense quickly and block a ball. And my coach put me on defense forever. She looked, at me, she looked me straight in my face. She said, I don't care if you think you could shoot that ball into that hole. You playing defense forever, right? And then I realized that I mean, playing field hockey, playing soccer, play, even playing basketball, with a very defense mindset, right? Like, I don't need to score. Once we have the ball, somebody's going to score. 
Um, and so making that transition from defensive to offensive, Mr. Defender, do you get a lot of opportunities to push that far forward in the game? Or are you the type of defender, like another Magic Johnson, as a defender, you see yourself as an assist man, and your job is to take the ball from these by them and push it forward? I feel as if, I mean, for me personally, I obviously, I defend first because that's my role. Yeah. I know some other defenders who play um, right back as I do, they like to push forward a lot. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I would rather stay defensively first, and if the game brings me forward, then I'll come forward. Okay. See, because I, I know, I played soccer, this is a thinking game, mm -hmm. right? The physical training, the training of your body is so that you could think and not worry about what your body is going to do next because brain and your body are connected that, to the point where you think it, the, ma the message is passed on, or better yet, it's your foot that's actually driving the message up to your head. Your foot say, look here, I know where the ball is going, and this is where we go in, boss. Right? It's well, what I try, I try to, to get the guys to understand that not only in, in soccer, but all sports, is 90% mental, and yeah. the 10% of it is the physical. And like you said, once you, you train your brain to, to react to situations quickly, then your body will follow yeah. because of the muscle memory and that sort, right. of, that sort of thing. So. And if your body is well, um, I wouldn't say well fit, but obviously my academics are off. If you are disciplined and you're well trained and you're strong, you're flexible, right? You're pliable, then the risk of injury right, is reduced because you know your body is going to do what it, can, what, what it needs to do, right? That's a, I think it's a very big thing. And so as I got older, I had an ankle injury, I realized that, look, I have to reduce the intensity to play with because my body isn't going to do necessarily what my brain thinks it right. can do. Yeah. You well, know? These guys can tell you, I, pre I preach all of these things like, yeah. all of the time. You know, you need to be... You need to be flexible. You have to do your stretching. You have to eat properly. You have to get your rest. You have to hydrate. All of these things make you a, a, a top-tier athlete. And, and these are the things that you need to focus on all year round, not just in competition. All right. So I, oh, I want to talk about the future of residential training camps for our national soccer team to build camaraderie, to maintain us momentum, right? throughout the year but we've got four tickets we got to give away we've got four tickets we're giving away today to the conquer calf the nation's league football bahamas versus puerto rico men's nations league puerto rico game starting tomorrow so i've got these four tickets i've got two adult tickets and i've got two children's tickets and here's how i want to do the giveaway producer I want to ask the audience, the first person to call in with the name of a soccer player that's played soccer in the last 10 years, we good, good with that? What's your knowledge base like assistant coach? 10 years? That depends on the names they call. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I've got, these are my soccer, my football experts in the room. If they know the name, then you win the prize. Okay? Because I only know seven soccer players. One is Leslie St. Fleur. The other one is Leslie A. Mins, the greatest soccer coach <laughs> and player in the history of the Bahamas. I, I declare that. I mean, I know that. I play. <laughs> I train under him. Uh, I got a winner already. Ronald, okay. Now, Texter, <laughs> I don't know if you know how to pronounce the name. I don't know if I know how to pronounce this name, but I think it's correct. I'm going to let my assistant coach. Oh, Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. Is that a soccer player? No, this, this, I think they're trying to answer the question about the, the greatest Brazil, player Brazil, in Brazil. Yeah. Well, they got the first one, but the second one, Ronald Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. First of all, but your name is too long for me to shout from the stands. <laughs> right? But that, that means little... There's a story behind that, right? Isn't the, the... He took that name on in tribute 
to another player whose name is similar to his? I'm not, I'm not sure of the history of, of his name. But I think so, and, 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 and it was a tribute, and so there's, I think there's like Waldino, and then there's this boy, and then it's, uh, he took on the name as a tribute to the senior player, Okay. right? Uh, yeah, let's go to the same way that Sean Paul, the reggae artist, it turns out that his name, Sean Paul, is, uh, he started off as Sean DePaul, and it was a tribute to a famous cricket player mm -hmm. in, in the Caribbean. Yes. Let's see, we got a caller. Good morning, caller. I'm ready for you. You're, you're calling to answer the sand dollar trivia or the soccer trivia? Soccer. Are we ready? I'm you say you got to be a Bahamian? No, no. Any, for, any soccer player, but if it's a Bahamian, these boys will know. Extra points. Uh, Mbappe. Say that again. Mbappe. Oh, Mbappe? Yeah. French Bay? Yes, sir. Here's what to do. Don't hang up. Give your number to the producer. And I will contact you after the show to, to give you the details to pick up your ticket. I want to leave it here at the Guardian for you, but just in case we'll touch base, okay? Not a problem. You want an adult ticket or a children's ticket? Uh, I need an adult. There you go. Yeah, my daughter will be playing in the floor in two weeks. So. Oh, she's going to be playing on the ticket. She's going to be playing on the women's soccer team? Oh, yeah. Boy, I got a story about that. Thank you for calling in. I got to slip <laughs> these girls in here somehow. And I know the gentleman won't mind us mentioning the team. No, they ain't gonna mind. No, no. These are some good guys. <laughs> Producer, uh, take, I want you to take the call. Thank you so much, sir. The answer he gave us was Mbappe. He played for France in the most recent World Cup. And he is, ooh, he's a hot prospect. Every team in the world wants him right now. Now, I got an answer for our on-the-clock sand dollar trivia while we were talking. The answer is Pele. I say this without fear of contradiction. Pele is the most famous soccer player in Brazil. Amen. Living or dead. Amen. He is perhaps the most famous soccer player in the world. But I let people talk about Maradona because he bad. He, he off the chain. I let them talk about him. Yeah, see, he, he was... He was, he was good. Yeah. <laughs> He's a close, 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 close second. But I think Pele coming on to uh, the national team as a barefoot player, right? right. Um, and when you watch soccer today and you juxtapose these modern-day reels with reels of Pele, you see that these new moves that are stunning audiences, Pele done perfect them long time. Now, what you may see is an evolution, right? And a slight enhancement or advancement on what Pele was doing, but Pele created for all of these tricks uh, in soccer. So, okay, guys, listen. I've got two kids' tickets and one adult ticket left. Trivia is still open. No texter. You won once. I'm giving you the Ronald, Ronaldino. Be giving you that one. So now I've got... Two children's tickets left to give away, dear Bahamas. It's like nothing to spend twenty dollars <laughs> to take a children to the soccer match this weekend. I got two tickets. So here's how you could win these two tickets: simple call in, text in with the name of a soccer player. My experts will affirm whether you're correct or not. And then I got a third question I'll throw out. So the first two people to answer any of these questions. If you could tell me what a nutmeg is. If you could tell me what a nutmeg is in soccer. I know what nutmeg is because I just make gin and coconut water. I know what nutmeg is. Tell me what a nutmeg is in soccer. You could win one of these tickets in the alternate. I just need the name of a soccer player playing right now. Again, the greatest soccer player in the history of Brazil, most famous. Pele, we got that answer. We got Mbappe as an answer. French soccer player played in the World Cup, stunned the world with his skill and his tenacity. You can't say Leslie St. Fleur because I already called that. <laughs> right? But any soccer player, and if you call off a soccer player, if you know a soccer player from the Bahamas national team, I will supply an extra prize with that. Now, gentlemen, Guyana, Antigua, and Barbuda, Puerto Rico, who do you think is your strongest competition out of this group? 
I feel like Guyana, definitely. Guyana? They've got some good quality there. Yeah. Strong team, physical team. It'll be a proper test. Right. I think Guyana has a culture of football, right? It also sort of uh, builds the teams, part of the teams. Prowess. Okay, there we go. We got to go to a break, guys. Uh, you think of those questions, think of those answers. We need a soccer player. I've got two children's tickets left for the Nations League's football team, Bahamas versus Puerto Rico. You get a chance to win these children's tickets, buy your adult ticket to take your children, or I may just have to pair up an adult, a child ticket with an adult ticket for our two winners, so you still have a chance to win. We've got to go to a break. We will be right back. Stay tuned. You're on the clock. The Bahamas Football Association. We'll be right back. Get ready, Bahamas. The Nations League is upon us. This Saturday, September 9th at 6 p.m., our men's national team, the Junkanoo Boys, go head-to-head -head with Puerto Rico at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Dive into the electric match day vibes. Secure your spot now. VIP tickets at $35 of drinks, finger foods, premium seating, and exclusive benefits. Adults for $20 and children under 13. Purchase tickets online at BahamasFA.net or in person at the NSA box office. Rally behind the Junkanoo Boys and don't miss out on this soccer spectacle. Created Events and Marketing presents Becoming, a transformative women's empowerment summit that will take place on September 24th at the National Training Agency located on Gladstone Road at 3 p.m. Phenomenal speakers include Dequessa Dean, Simone Bow, Shirley Pinder, Marissa Mason-Smith, and Dr. Nyambi Campbell-Dean. Not to mention a flaunted fashion show segment hosted by Miss Phyllis Garraway. Tickets are $50 and can be purchased at the Nassau Guardian or S Med Spa, number 15 Bradley Street, Palmdale. Part proceeds will be donated to the Jenny Dean Caring and Sharing Cancer Support Group. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Good morning and welcome back to On the Clock with Erin Green. Bahamas Football Association is in the building. And while we were on a break, we got another winner. I'm going to take down your text information. Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi, one of the most, he ain't messy at all, you know. <laughs> one of the most famous uh, modern day soccer players. And he's famous. Let me tell you why he's most famous. This player's a Bahamian. <laughs> right? He get fired from one job. He's like, oh, you all thought you was going to fire me? Watch this. Let me go play professional soccer somewhere else. He's currently playing in the U.S., right? Yes, in Miami. The, right in Miami. Right in Miami? Yes. I tell you all this, but he's a Bahamian Lionel <laughs> Messi. <laughs> Welcome to the Bahamas. You're right in our little sister city up there in Miami. This is fantastic. Okay, we are giving away tickets. I've got three Tickets gone so far. So listen, I've got one adult ticket and two children's tickets. If you got two, you got to do something with this weekend. I'd be, be prepared to bundle these three tickets together, but you have to give me a name of a soccer player. You name me two soccer players and tell me what a nutmeg is. <laughs> a nutmeg. You see, Bahamians should know what a nutmeg is because we like to posterize people. I don't know if you all noticed how Kai Jones posterized Wemby, mm -hmm. the, the phenom, the latest, um, first, I think first pick in the draft, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. First sure. pick in the draft this year, our little old Kai Jones center posterized <laughs> Wemby. Now, I had a Kai Jones story for you all today, but I want to follow up some more before I bring it to the table. Kai Jones, we don't know what's up, but we're praying for you. We hope you well. Listen, just take time. If you need to come home, spend a couple of days by your mummy. <clears throat> Well, just a little tidbit. Yeah. Kai Jones actually played soccer for a, a short stint uh, for a local one of the local clubs, uh, Cavalier. Yeah. He actually played for a short stint, uh, played soccer. That's where he get his footwork from, his, actually, his skills. Actually, Sammy Hunter as well, who yeah. plays uh, on the basketball team. He also played soccer as yeah. well. You'll so. be surprised how soccer training can build and develop skills for other sports. Yeah, I, I think... All sports, uh, in some way or the other, can assist other sports. 
I think something that we also lost mm -hmm. um, and that I notice with a lot of a lot of kids nowadays is kids don't play in the yard. Kids don't do hopscotch. They don't climb trees. They don't mm -hmm. skip and whatnot. So when they come to, to soccer, they're very uncoordinated. Yes. Because they, don't do all, they, because they only can move their thumbs. They can't do anything with right. their feet. Right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because they have too much screen time, not enough sun time and soil time, feet in the gro on the ground. Absolutely. Man, listen, and, and, and so it's up to us as adults to preserve some energy so that we can go out with kids. You don't have to run up and down with them, but A, you should be present, right? Be present, be supervisory, C, to engage them, encourage them, and let them know, listen, you got to lie to your children sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you got to lie to them and say, this is fun. We are all having fun. Eventually, they'll fall in and understand it is fun. You got a caller on the line. Good morning, caller. Yes, uh, Sadio Man. Say that again. Sadio Man, M-A-N-E. Yep, okay. So that's why, and I got a text here. So listen, sir. Do you have a children to take with you? Well, I, I, I have a son I can take with me. There you go. You got a Nations League children ticket. Thank you. Now, Thank you. I've got the last, I got a text up. This is the last ticket. You texted with the digits 1252. Two. The last ticket in my hand is a children ticket, and I've given it to you. And you are, oh, man, the poo texter. Okay. All right. The texter got it right. A nutmeg is when a player kicks the ball through an opponent's leg. It's like when you posterize them on the soccer pitch. Yes, sir? Go on. That is incorrect. Oh, okay. What's a nutmeg? A nutmeg is when you kick it through their legs and then you get the ball back. Right. It, in that definition, I could just be passing it to my teammate and not get it back. That's technically... Not a nutmeg. Not a complete to nutmeg. To properly posterize them and embarrass them, mm -hmm. you got to pass the ball through them to yourself. To yes. yourself. So yes. that's what a nutmeg is. Yes. Their text, I sorry, I thought you got it right. It's, it's a more close. complete process. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to pass the ball to yourself through the opponents. Okay. So, text, I got one ticket for you. It's a cheering ticket. I'm going to message you after the show. Confirm details for pickup. Now, caller, I'm taking your call, but I am afraid I have to tell you that we all out of tickets <laughs> to give away. Good morning, caller. You on the clock. Yeah, this is Sparky, so I ain't got none of them block phone account anyway, so. I got you. <laughs> so, I wasn't going to answer no question. I got you. <laughs> but uh, good, good, good sports Friday. Good morning, Miss Green, and everybody else out there in the Bahama Islands. Yes, sir. You know, I don't hear too much about any more volleyball. I remember when, in my day, volleyball was one of the hardest sports. Because mm -hmm. I played volleyball for Government High and the Paradise Island Giants. Wow. One team we could never beat was Prince William. Okay. It would always come down to Government High and Prince William. We were dominant in volleyball then, and then it also came down to the Paradise Island Giants and Prince William in the night league. Okay. Okay, I went back as far as playing volleyball in the Oaksville Hangar. <laughs> That's wow. how far back I went. Graduated in June, I graduated June 1970. What do you mean Prince Will was playing in the night league? Yeah, we, we, the, the, okay, what happened is the high school teams got so good. They could play in the Dr. night Norman league. Norman Gay and, and okay. Tom DeBoy Grant, them, they had night leagues used to play down to the sports center. The open the way you turn into the sports center now actually used to be the head office and the, the ramp for where the planes used to come in, Maki Airlines and, 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 and all of them, Pan Am and all of them. Okay. That was the airport. That was the Oaksville Airport. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Then behind there was the big hangar, Oaksville hangar, where they used to repair the planes. And plus, when the town during the uprising in town, that's where the soldiers used to live, inside the Oaksville. Okay. They had a lot of rooms and stuff. Sparky, and I, I got I to get back to soccer. But... I want to thank you for calling in. Tell you why. I get a story on deck. I do a lot of sport. I try to cover the week sports stories. I'm glad you mentioned volleyball. If y'all don't mind, just a quick mention. Let's big up Bahamian Eugene Stewart as he returns to Europe to continue his professional volleyball career. After a one-year hiatus, he heads to Portugal to play for Vitoria Sports Club based in 
Paris, Portugal for the 2023-24 season. He was home for a while. He played for the New Providence team in the Bahama Games and helped them win the title. Uh, he represented the Bahamas national men's team at the 18th Caribbean Zonal Volleyball Association Senior Championships in Paramaribo, Suriname over the summer. And in beach volleyball, he teamed up with John Isaacs and the two played on two stops on the 2023 North Central American and Caribbean Volleyball Confederation Beach Volleyball Tour. So Sparky, I like, thank you for sparking that. Big up Bahamian Eugene Stewart. We're glad that you got back to playing professional volleyball. Did you all know that you could have a career in professional volleyball? Just yes. like our good friend Lucius Johnson has, uh, Lucius, make sure I get that last name correct, has a professional career in video gaming. Gentlemen, did you think when you was a little cheering that you could have a professional <laughs> career in video gaming? We say congratulations, Lucius, Jonathan Lucius. He uh, made it out of the first round, sort of advanced, so he improved his performance this year over last year. Gentlemen. Don't worry about video games. <laughs> Y'all got to watch tape. You got to watch tape, train, move sand up and down the beach. It's good training. It's good training. Good discipline training. You can mean you're frustrated and you're tired, but you still got to wake. Moving sand up and down the beach is the thing they put on us a little cheering. But let's go through the details for tomorrow's game. Again, dear Bahamas, we're all on duty. We've all been called to attend the national uh, football team, Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, 6 p.m., Saturday, Bahamas versus Puerto Rico. Yes. Bring your cowbells, your goats and drums, no whistles. Uh, right, right, your, no whistles. noise makers, anything you have to make noise, come on out and support our, our young men. Bring a good attitude, uh, plenty energy. Bring a little cash to spend and support the BFA, buy some concessions, stay hydrated, bring, you know, buy your water, buy your water, buy your water, stay hydrated. 6 p.m., Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Now, have you all organized any watch parties? And is there an after-game venue that the players are going to go to to sort of celebrate, to relax, or do you guys have to go straight back into recovery mode um, and rest your bodies, take care of your bodies. Well, there, there'll be uh, a brief moment after the game for yeah. fans to greet players. Okay. But after after that, uh, we have to head back to the hotel so that they can recover, rest. Bed and uh, go to bed. Because we have to travel the next day um, <laughs> to get ready for Guyana. Oh, so, that's right. Right. Yeah, you don't have time up. to celebrate. We no. got to do the celebrating for you. Yeah. Dear Bahamas, you got to be there 6 p.m. We're sticking around to the end of the game so we could meet the players, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, give them our support. Then they got to go home, bed and go to bed to get ready for Guyana because yes. it's going to be a big game. Uh, and numbers to call, again, you can go to the NSA, National Sports Authority, today before 4 p.m. to purchase your ticket. Tickets can be purchased at the door. 20 for adults, $10 for children, general admission, 35 for B VIP, it comes with a bear, finger foods, uh, a special seating area, and plenty, plenty cool breeze. They can put you all where the cool breezes be, <laughs> VIP. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to be great. Gentlemen, call off your name and your, your, your position one more time. Michael Massey, a midfielder. I hear that British accent. <laughs> and William Gardner, a defender. All right, what you was doing in Britain? <laughs> Going to school? I'm going to school soon, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. No, man, you're Bahamian. <laughs> you could hear the Bahamian. I could hear the Bahamian. It's, it's a bit of both. A bit of both. Yeah. No, no, I heard. <laughs> trust me, I heard it. That's good. And if, if you isn't a Bahamian, you're a Bahamian now. Gentlemen, I say congratulations before you even get out there because you've put the preparation in. You could see the discipline. You're doing the training. And your coaches believe in you. I know your parents believe in you. And we believe in you. We got to go. Uh... Assistant coach, tell them your name again. Uh, Kevin Davies. you just as important as the players. <laughs> Coaching is just important as the players. Producer, take us out of here. I didn't know I was supposed to tell you, see if you could find the longest goal on the board. But for my soccer players, they know what that means. You guys stay tuned. C.A. Nuri and Guardian Radio AM is up next. I got to go buy some tape for my ankles.
<laughs> so I go out on them bleachers and dance. You guys have a great day. Thank you.